I'm going to just get a paintbrush. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to point out is I covered up the um, actual pastel when I sprayed. I covered it up with my clip. So I wanted you to see exactly how much it darkened it on this second spray. And just remind you that I like that because it means that I can get a richer dark without using black. Um, it is important not to let this happen, except like in this case on purpose, because it's very hard to then match the colors or make the, the total thing look the way you want it to. Um, the other thing I just wanted to do because I mentioned it last time how much this was bugging me that um, my stuff, you know, that the edges weren't like the edges really were. So I'm going to just redraw my um, just here and here. I don't really need it. The bottom and the top are okay. Um, I just want this to. So what would happen in this case, because I didn't compose it perfectly, um, is now my mat would end up being a little smaller. Um, also, I didn't draw it exactly right, but I can't fix everything um, because it's kind of too late. But I think I should fix the top of this. OK, so what I've noticed is that the top of this isn't lined up with the bottom of it. The top of the picture is not lined up with the bottom. So. I'd rather change the bottom than have to change the top. So no matter at this point what's right or wrong, I'm going to stick with the top and change the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center. And I'm just, you could use a ruler if you want, but I'm just going to use my paintbrush. Just a okay, so. Right here is the center. And then what I'm gonna do is from the edge of my paper, which I know is straight, um, because I know that because I did not cut it, it came like this out of the box. I'm gonna measure um, to that center line. And then if I put another dot right here and another dot right here, I can um, then come back and check this and say, is that equal? And so look how far off it is. Um, okay. And so here too. So I can just draw a line right up and down this. Um, I don't have a ruler. I can reach right this minute. But let's see if I can kind of do this. Okay, so that's my center line. And so what I'm going to do now, what I have to do, is I have to go back and forth and I have to check um, where the center is. And I have to make decisions like, am I gonna come out more on this side now? And I think I'm, and then I'm just gonna check it again. So that's, that's better. Um, and maybe I can just bring it in here a little bit too. Now this is going to just have to go way out more. And I'm going to come in on this side also. So I'm really not at this moment concerned, holy cow, concerned about what is right or wrong. Like, is this picture the right height compared to its width? I'm not thinking about anything like that because probably now it's a little too late to fix that many mistakes. So what I'm just trying to do is, um, is make it be symmetrical. And I see now, maybe that's some of my mistakes I made right there. Like I didn't have the space right. Um, so just a tiny bit more in this direction. I didn't have the space right, right here. And so maybe it's just that I let that get too small. Um, okay, and then um, this, Kind of got lost in here. So there comes a time where you just have to accept is or say to yourself, okay, is it believable? Um, because uh, with pastels, like with oils, you can change your drawing all the way through. Pastels, it's harder to change your drawing. So I see I kind of exaggerated this up here wanted to be sure that it looked like it was above your eye level, but I think I went too far with that. So 
I'm just gonna come in a little bit and then I'll bring the spout up a little bit. So now it's, it's pretty hard for me to see where I drew. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do now is come back and um, yeah, put in some of those colors that will um, correct my drawing and allow me to see it. So um, I don't wanna start too light in here. So I'm just gonna try this and see. Okay, and now I'm gonna check it again to be sure it's right. Gosh, it's still not right. Okay, so I can't go any further that way. All right, yeah, it's okay. The inside line is okay. So I'm gonna take my darker color, whatever that's gonna be, and just come in a little bit more. So I could have done this in the very beginning um, and tried to improve my drawing uh, right from the start. Um, I do think it's better to draw first and then, um, and then look at it and correct it. And that way you get better at seeing your mistakes instead of just better at measuring. Um, yeah, and then this comes up a little more. Okay, so um, now I did this because it was just bugging me too much. I, I don't know what I did wrong. I don't know if I made this big enough. Maybe I didn't make this big enough. I'm not sure, but I don't want to change everything right now. And luckily I'm working on paper, so I can just narrow my painting down a little bit. And um, I just was feeling really confused about this extra yellow and where the colors went and everything. So I'm gonna just stop with that. So now I've um, pretty much got my colors. They're, they're well on the way, I'd say. And what I wanna do now is I wanna add colors without just totally um, covering up what is underneath. So now what I do is I start working in a stroke. And I just am trying things. So that is what I talked about before. The problem with still life really is a lot of times there's just not really much texture. And so the texture you're making, like just going with my strokes in a little bit different directions, the texture that I'm making really has nothing to do with the texture of the object. In this case, because the object is totally smooth. But um, so, um, yeah, so, the normal, like I'm right-handed, so my strokes have this tendency to all go this way. So I, I've worked really hard to be able to turn my hand over and not just always go um, the direction that's normal for me as a right-handed person. And then if you're left-handed, your strokes would be more tending to come this other way. And I, I maybe I work on my paintings too long. I'm not really sure about that. I, I work on them until I feel satisfied or until I am, get to this point where I'm really afraid I'm just gonna wreck it. So when you get to the point where you think you're, gonna, you're afraid you're gonna wreck it, that's really the time to start a new painting because um, if you're not willing to take chances, if you're not willing to wreck it, then it's very hard to improve it because I do the things that cross my mind um, without too much consideration. And in some ways I feel like this <laughs> kind of looks like it did, it's kind of like almost gone back to an earlier stage. Uh, whereas before it was looking, you know, kind of not finished, but could have kind of been finished. And now I've kind of got it all messed up again. 
a lot of times it's very hard to keep your highlight on a white thing and still get your white thing as light as you want it to be. So sometimes I end up making my white objects so light that, um, that, that I can't make that highlight. No, I don't think that's gonna happen here. When in doubt, keep trying other colors and see what happens. So everything I'm doing, I'm doing it because, well, I, I feel like I saw that color. So, um, and I think the, it's close, but I think these vertical planes, oh, and this is a pretty white spot, so I wanna be sure I have that in. It's a pretty bright spot. So I want these vertical planes, I think, are just a little lighter than this little side plane right here. I could be exactly backwards about that, but that's I think that's what it is. Um, now I've got to do something else to my background, but some a, kind of a thing that becomes a problem is that now my background is super dark because I sprayed it and now I don't probably have any colors that I'll be darker than that. See like this, this looks like a super dark color. But you know, maybe, maybe it was just kind of too black anyway. So the two last things, well, it depends actually, but now I'm definitely thinking more about strokes. Um, I am trying to add colors and make my colors more refined. And I, I try never to leave just one color in a place. So that's definitely a, a, a spot that I need to come back over again with um, some other colors. And one thing about white that's kind of tricky is that, so like right now my purple here is on the blue is so strong. Um, and it makes it look like it's a, kind of like it's a, a white thing that has purple stripes on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep adding colors into that shadow, the colors that I, I see into that shadow color. So it's not too obviously one thing or another. Um, and that is the deal about white. If you don't, if you don't do that, it will really look like, um, It'll just look like a stripe on there. So really where you show people that it's white and the same thing is true of the lemons, you show them what the color of the object is here in the light side, not the shadow side. Um, yeah. So also I should say any drawing mistakes I've made at this point, it's just because I either didn't notice or um, probably just I didn't notice. So, you know, always, I'm always trying to do my best drawing, but, you know, like this, this really comes up way higher. I don't know, maybe I could fix that now. I don't know why I didn't see that. And now I'm doing just what I told you not to. I'm drawing with my pastel, just to make it perfectly clear that I'm not doing what I said. Um, so now the downside is, I've got to make it higher up on the inside. And always the thing is people could say, well, so what, you know? Oh, I think I picked up the black. Oh. Um, I try to keep my black in my box in a place I won't accidentally pick it up just like I right now did. Um, but now that I've done it, I, I feel I have to go over the whole background again. Okay, so that's still And of course, I've said many times, the worst thing you can do is redraw with a black pastel. Okay, well, so now, of course, I see this is too far down. It just, it just goes on and on. So um, at some point, you just have to say, you know, I'm going to really try hard to do better next time.
and this is kind of the thing I right here I don't really like about black is that it it kind of um, it kind of gets a little into your other colors more than more than any other color it um, it kind of just I don't know how to put it but it smudges in it's like it's just a little bit of a different texture to it now I am so sorry I ever noticed that mistake but that is pretty much how I am if I notice something's wrong then I'll try to fix it and if I don't notice it's wrong then happily I don't have to try to fix it so sometimes it's just as well not to look anymore because I didn't really did not want to get all hung up in this spot um, okay, so what is this little image? But in every painting, there are places that you're going to want to have more detail, um, which for me would be more variations of color, more subtle transitions of lights and darks. Um, that's how I create detail and um, harder edges in places and softer edges in other places. So people want to look at the area of most contrast. That's what we're attracted to from the time we're tiny, just born. So if you want people to look somewhere, make that <clears throat> the most contrasty place. If you don't want them to look somewhere, then um, don't make the contrast so strong. Wow, I hate that handle. Okay, so what I have to do now, I just have to try to make it look kind of believable and it is the same thickness all the way down. I think it was better when it was wrong. And it is kind of funny, I can't quite, because I'm at an angle, I can't quite see the effect of what I'm doing. So I'm actually looking at my computer monitor to see how I'm changing um, the painting. All right, well, I'm just gonna have to let that go in a big way. All right, so, you know, always my hope is that I'm making it better and it's, that is just not always what happens. Um, I think that you have to remember that every painting you do is what you're, part of what you're doing is you're learning how to be a better painter. And so if you don't take chances and push it beyond um, where you're capable of going, this is all like a big excuse, but don't push it on beyond where you're capable of going, then, um, then you probably aren't learning as much as you could. And so sometimes you need to wreck paintings. And um, then you have to ask yourself, well, what is a bad painting? And so I would say a, paint, a bad painting is a painting that you don't learn anything from. So that means that no matter really how, whatever the world will call bad, no matter how bad your painting is, the question really is, did you learn something from it? Or did you just repeat the same things you were successful at before? And then there's a good quote from Wolf Kahn where he says the greatest impediment to an artist is a good painting. And I think what he means by that is you do something that turns out really well and then the temptation just to repeat that is, is tremendous. So, or you do something that sells and then that temptation becomes, um, you know, pretty strong. So one thing I admire about Degas work, um, I mean, there's so many things, but is his work on edges. So if he shows you that this shape is like this here, he doesn't really feel obligated to particularly spell it out over here. And he is a master drawer, so it's not like he can't spell it out. He just, he just doesn't. So if I'm gonna show you the outside shape of this, um, of this handle, like then Degas would say, there's no reason for me to show you the inside shape. 
or over here too. So I'm just going to make all this side really out of focus. And for a long time, I've been trying to figure out how out of focus I could make stuff. And then I'm going to make this a little more in focus up here because this is out of focus. And you can even just, oops, yeah, got to use a clean finger, kind of skim some of the light off the top so it bounces into that darker background. Don't see that unless you have a really um, dark background against the light thing. But in this case, I can kind of see the air, the light bouncing all around. And another thing about Vega and Cezanne, who were both really great at this whole edges thing, is that they, they don't have like really super long edges that are um, in the same level of focus. So like this one, as it goes behind that lemon, I want to make it more out of focus. And then as it comes up here, I can make it more in focus. And I could just decide to make this a little out of focus in here. And another thing is the highlights. Let's see what I can do about the highlights. The highlights really, because they're at the point, well, let's see. This is a point that's really close to me. So the highlights, and here too, this is like closest to me, the viewer, where the, the object starts turning in both directions. That's where the highlight goes. So you don't usually see a highlight right on the edge of something. So having these highlights in the middle um, helps to bring the middle out and the, making it a little um, less in focus on the edges helps to um, also bring the middle out. So if you wanna do something like that, like I say, you kind of need to be sure your hands are clean. Um, and I always drag the light color into the, um, darker color because when you drag the darker color into the light, it gets muddy. So I've kind of lost track now of how many colors I've used on here. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there and go to the lemons because I don't know, I wanted that to be more yellow in the white to make it warmer, but now I just have to see what what is up with the lemons. So the lemons are a much stronger, you know, they're definitely yellow. So they're much stronger color than the white thing. And so one thing I really like is to paint things that are white or things that are brown or copper or gray. Those kind of things you can, you can just do so much with the color because, um, because they're not so obvious, like a yellow is a pretty, strong and obvious color. Um, maybe I can actually come over a little more on that side. Let's just see. If you spray it like I just did, where you spray really super heavy, um, you you're pretty, you are obligated to work on the whole thing again because it just it won't look right if you don't. The places you don't work on um, will really the texture and all will really look different. So if you get to a point in your painting that you don't want to work on it all again, then don't spray it super heavy. I mean, I have like just wrecked places sometimes where I really had to come back and just work on a spot. And I've used um, my viewfinder to isolate a place that I need to spray. Um, so that does work. Um, it's hard not to overspray it then, so you have to be really careful. Um, let this not go on. All right. 
And then when I'm done with a painting, I don't spray them anymore. I used to, but I, I just don't trust the fixative these days to not do some weird thing. And if you have more than one can of fixative around the house, I always use the newest can. Like if I was gonna spray it at the end, I would definitely use the newest can of fixative just to be sure that nothing weird happens and probably you should do a test before you spray because I've just really had some terrible things happen to my pastels with fixative that was um, old. And the other thing is it, when it's cold weather, you can't leave your fixative in the car. Um, if you do and then you spray with it, good night, who knows what will happen. So, um, and you have to be careful in the summer too because I had a, it got so hot in the trunk of my car, I had a can of fixative, like, I don't know what happened exactly, but the whole thing um, didn't exactly explode, but it might as well have, because my car, the fixative can was empty and my car was super stinky. And so here, I mean, even in the painting, in the photograph, I mean, you can really see that, you know, this is pretty much lost. in the dark. So, um, so here I want that to be really in focus up here where it's in front, but then down here just seems like it's a little too much too. So I'm just gonna kind of try to put something not quite so bright down here. And, uh, and then work into it a little bit so that doesn't look so much like I'm out. Um, shadows have to start um, right, like where this shadow is on the object, the shadow underneath it starts at that same spot. So I've got my shadow on my, good night, a million texts here. I'm sorry, I forgot to turn off my phone. Um, so yeah, I'm trying this. That's a little better. Oh, dropped. I try not to make too scratchy strokes. I like my strokes to be um, kind of bold and not too scratchy. So, um, okay, well, not 100% happy here. But I'm just going to move on. Okay, and so this lemon um, seemed like it was a little cooler yellow, not so hot a color. So I'm using a yellow that's not as orangey. Um, let's see. I hope you're appreciating how far downhill things are going before they get better. Hopefully they're getting better. Okay, there is a little reflections under here. So remember on your reflected lights, they cannot be as strong as your real light. So never, basically, pretty much never um, use a color for the reflected light that you use for the light on something. Um, so I want to see if I can make that little bit come out and make that be the really um, strong little focal point, that little, um, Right here, this little, what is that? The place it connected to the tree. Okay, I need something that's not quite so.
spell. Okay, let's see. And remember, if you think of white as a pool color, like I think I'm using white right that minute, um, a pool color that will, you know, cool down the, the yellow. Um, All right, so I need something I can use on the edge back there. Sometimes, there was a time in my painting career for a while that I tried to find the actual color of the edge. So what, so like you see it sometimes in um, people like Gauguin's work and a lot of um, Gauguin's followers, he, um, he would um, use that blue edge everywhere. So I, I, I don't do that. I don't outline everything in that blue color. But I do like to see if I can find the color that will go around that edge to make it start to turn over. And um, I used to be kind of more obsessed by it and I'm not at all anymore. But it's just something to think about that there is a color here between here and there that is going to start making that edge look like it goes around. Because of course, you can only see what you can see, but this lemon, it isn't flat. It goes around behind, it has a back. And so you kind of want to be thinking about that the whole time you're painting to make sure that um, your lemon or any of your things feel like they are going all around. That is, if you're trying to create form. If you want your paintings flat, then don't worry because it's kind of easier to make them flat than round. So you're all set. But that, that's a modern um, idea, more modern idea in painting is that keeping everything super flat. So here, maybe I want to have a little bit of in focus place up here. I really wanted that to be more in focus and maybe it's just I've got to use more dark over here. Well, the best thing about these demonstrations might be that you can see how much of a struggle it is for me. There's this incredible artist named Richard Schmid, and he used to um, he used to live out in Oklahoma, and I think now he lives in Vermont. But um, he would say these things. He'd say, "Well, I did this, and then the painting just painted itself." And I just like, "Wow, how does that happen?" Because I never had anything just paint itself, and um, things are kind of up in the air till right at the end, where I decide if either <clears throat> another Wolf Con quote either I finished the painting or the painting finished me. So, um, yeah. All right, so I think I like that a little better. It um, isn't really as pale in the real life as it looks on the, um, on the, on the video. And I think it's still bigger. I'm just having a lot of trouble controlling. I'm constantly having trouble controlling things over on this far left side of the painting. So, and I'm trying to keep this um, edge here more, uh, made not just a, a circle, like a tennis ball. I'm trying to keep my edge on the lemons more like they really are, which is a series of straight lines. Uh, but now I've got a big, somebody like smash that one. All right, thank goodness, one lemon to go. And then of course, all these reflections. Okay. This lemon is quite a bit darker. I feel like anytime I don't know what to do, I just like use some violet. But I guess to me, violet is my most absolute useful color. And I guess I use it like maybe other artists use grays.
now have like pretty much a rotten one in here. All right, so it's kind of just for me, it's just back and forth, try this, try that. This is not unlike my real life right here. And I sure am looking forward to getting outside and painting. And um, a long time ago, I told my teacher that I knew I would never be a landscape painter. And he told me I was too young to make that decision. And I, I've always really appreciated that he said that because no matter, you might think you just hate something and you never want to do it again. And I have to admit, you know, still life has had been kind of that way for me because I'm just, have done so many. Um, but there's so much to be learned from anything you paint. So it's a really good idea to be open. And I have to say, I would absolutely never have believed I could paint those pictures with all those figures in them that I've been doing at the beach. It just, um, it just seems impossible that I could do that. I never thought I was any good at figures, and I definitely don't feel like I'm any good at portraits. But um, yeah, to do landscapes with figures in them, that's, that was just, even if it was a giant fail, it was just such a nice change from everything else I've been doing. I think maybe now it's like, it's just, I'm feeling like, oh man, it is hard to control these painting, the pastels compared to the one hairbrush I've been painting um, oils with, but also pastel is a more casual medium than oils. So, so, so what if it's not perfectly controlled? I did, I was hoping I could kind of make this um, area right in here sort of a, real little center of interest because it's one of the few places that has some uh, real detail, but um, I don't know, just not, it's just not going my way. And I don't want to spend forever. Things really slow down as you get toward the end of your painting. Um, it just, it takes longer to make decisions and it takes longer to um, evaluate those decisions. So um, that's just to be expected. In the beginning, you just can kind of slam it on there. Although I have to say, it looks like I'm still slamming. Um, you can kind of slam it on there and, and make a lot of choices. But what you want to do when you're almost at the end of your painting is you probably, you just want to make one choice at a time and then evaluate that choice and then come back and decide if um, what your next choice would be. So now I need some in-between colors in my lemon here. I'm going to use some of that in my collection. Maybe I did. Maybe that's exactly what I used before. OK, so <clears throat> I did kind of like my reflections before, so I'm feeling a little sad. But I'm going to see if I can just make them better. So I, I don't try to remember what I did before. And all my pastels were put away today before I came back to this so that I would not necessarily just use the things I'd used before. Um, for better or worse, that's what I did. <clears throat> um, sometimes like back when I used to paint a lot of gardens, I would actually, it's really easy to use the same color too much. Um, I guess in everything, but I especially I found it to be true in gardens using just finding a color that works and using it everywhere. So what I would do is I would um, <clears throat> set my pastels up in my box so that I wouldn't use them again, um, just to be sure I didn't use the, too much of the same color. Okay, so. 
Also, you got to remember, like I'm sort of letting this get away from me. You got what you want to remember is that the reflections, when you look at the reflections with your eyes wide open, it, you're almost guaranteed to not get them right. So what you really need to do is um, squint at your objects, at your, at your still life, and then squint at your painting and make sure that the reflections are about the same level as they are in each, in the painting and in the photograph or the setup as they are when you squint at it because you just can't tell if you, if you look at it with your eyes wide open. I, I don't exactly know why. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry in advance that I can't really answer that question. I just know that it's true. And I didn't make it up, someone else told me. Which I think you should know also that I don't think I've added one thing to the long history of art. I'm just repeating to you the things that my teachers have told me and that have worked for me. Because not everything, I guess, maybe, maybe I don't remember the things they told me that didn't really work. Um, God, I need something, but what? Now things have gotten a little murky here in my box. I've been throwing stuff, just kind of throwing stuff back when I get done with it. I think I'd like that shadow to be a little stronger up there. That, and then as it gets behind this other lemon, it would get weaker again, but maybe, maybe I went too far. Now. So edges are something you make up. They're not what's really there. You decide what you want to be in focus and you decide where you want the viewer's eye to go um, and where you want them to look. And so you're the boss of your little universe that you've created. You're the storyteller here. Mm -hmm. And it's always, 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 although I don't always, always do this because probably I'm lazy. Um, it's always better to, well, actually now I am doing it quite a bit, but what's led to is that I cannot finish a single painting. So I have all the paintings I'm working on, the oil paintings are all um, spread around this room. And I, I see them every day, the sort of most current ones, some have actually managed to be decided they're finished. Um, but I, I feel like I, I feel like I haven't, I just can't finish a painting because as long as they're sitting out here, I'll see things that are wrong with them. Okay, so now these are all a lot the same. So I think I wanna make them um, not so much the same. Um, so I'm going to make this one a little less, it seems to me like it's a little less, and then um, this one in the middle <clears throat> needs to get a little darker back in here. Oops. Um, so I don't blend usually with my finger, what I'm blending with is um, kind of like taking this pastel and running it over the two, the darker and the lighter. Okay, so that's way too not right. I like that as a description, way too not right. And this, I can tell when I pick this one up, that's a really soft pastel and I know that I do not want that right here because I don't want to obliterate what's underneath. I just want to make it a little lighter. Yeah, look at that enormous shadow, that or reflection. That's a reflection of a tremendous, like of a grapefruit. So, um, what do I need to do? Another thing that would be super smart to do, and I just will say straight up, I do not do this, is sign your paintings right when you're done with them. I hate signing paintings. And what always happens is I have a crap load of them that have to be signed. And sometimes I've even stuck them in the frame before I signed it. And then you have to pull it out and you sign it. So for signing, I use um, two different things. I'll either use a white charcoal pencil 
if the picture is really dark and or I'll use a black charcoal pencil if the if the painting has a lighter foreground and I usually sign in the lower left or lower right. I try to not let my signature start or end lined up with something else. So like if I was going to sign it here, maybe I would start my signature here in the middle of that, but which you can't see for some reason, in the middle of the lemon and then come across till it overlapped into here. Um, and you want to be sure that you sign high enough. So I guess that's one reason maybe not to sign on the head because I have had to sign things more than once. Maybe it makes more sense actually now that I'm just thinking out loud. Uh, maybe it makes more sense to um, see where the mat's actually going to go before you sign it so that you don't sign it under the mat. Um, but at the very least, I would say, you know, be sure you end three quarters of an inch from the edge and that you're at least three quarters of an inch up. And so like here, I would not want my signature to be lined up with that lemon and just go straight across. I would start it somewhere that it crossed over a form, not that it was stopped by a form. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I think also the problem, let's just see if this was sort of my bottom edge right here. Never, ever, ever in the history of the world do this with a charcoal pencil or a pencil or anything but soft charcoal. This is spoken by one who has done it before because then you've got this thing there and you change your mind about it and you can't, you can't get rid of that line. So this, I just wanted to see maybe if, um, yeah, that those lemon reflections are not really gonna go down quite so far and that looks better. This looks too orange here. Um, so I'm just going to try a little green on it. Another thing is you can put as many colors into an area as you want and not like wreck it. As long as you keep the values similar. So like in here, all my values of colors are about the same. That's the lightness or darkness. Over here, my values are about the same. That I just made too light. I should use something darker. Um, no. So what happens is I started and I got the mass. I got the big masses. I got light and dark, light and dark everywhere. And then I started putting in the in-between colors that would make this turn. And then I, um, but there's always a chance that I'll let maybe use something too dark on the light side or something too light on the dark side. And I lose my sense of the mass or I lose the contrast. So I start out with a lot of contrast, but then I make this too light or I make this too dark. Um, yeah, so when you lose the mass, as my teacher used to say, you get the mess. And the great thing about pastels and fixative is that the fixative takes it back to the mass for you. And there's no other painting uh, technique, uh, like oils, there's no way to remass it. You just have to, you just have to be able to remass it and take it back to a more beginning stage, which is hard to do psychologically. So, um, Anyway, I really like that about pastels is that you can get the spray remasses it for you. And then you have another chance to break it all down and try to carry it further. And if that gets away from you too, like, you know, maybe, I don't know if I would spray this again, if I was really trying to do a finished picture. Um, but yes, okay. So I'm gonna just call that quits. Let me just, and I'll take a good photograph of this too. I was worried I've gotten out of focus, but that's about it. So obviously there's a lot that could still be done, but I'm hoping that I made it better and that I made it so that you could learn something else from it. So thank you so much.